Uh, I'll show you some different examples of uh, backfires related to cortisol and stress. So just real quick, uh, kind of so what, what Brian was talking about before, this is my kind of little bit simplified version here. If we have, you can kind of say the dopamine and cortisol in this context are like opposite drivers, right? So really dopamine, uh, dopamine here when we're when we're delivering a dopamine a surge or a dopamine spike well then that's indication of a, of a nice experience something that's good good uh, for survival and then we have cortisol over here so once we spike cortisol it's indicative of a bad experience or something that's not good for our survival so we really want to you know want to keep the balance here it's a good way of thinking about it well, some of the things that are typical backfires here uh, uh, which trigger high cortisol reactions are, for example, stop words. So you have some learned behavior, for example, where then uh, a certain word can trigger, uh, you know, a nervous reaction, a stress reaction. So, for example, I've experimented quite a lot with using a spam in in the, in spam policies, basically. So, obviously, we have GDPR now, so I have to reconsider this. But I just want to show this as an example. But basically, um, I've done a lot of split tests on this, and every time I've I've had the word spam in a spam policy. Uh, it is it is hurt con form conversions form submissions. So this is an example from the usability test I did where I showed this and I asked, would you feel safe entering your personal information after reading the spam policy? And then you get you get comments like this. At a glance, it looks like you're spamming me. So no, or I just see the we hate spam sentence. No, I probably wouldn't enter my information based on this. And the reason why I've used this one is it's actually exactly what I've seen a lot on the internet. And the interesting thing here is basically you're emphasizing the one word, the stop word that people have a negative reaction to. So really all you're doing here is, is writing spam. So this is a typical backfire where you're trying to say, we're not going to do this, but all you but what you are triggering in a certain amount of, of people anyways is a reaction saying, oh my God, they're probably going to do that. So I, that's a very literal backfire. Stop words are very interesting, and it's it's uh, one of the things that can really help you is figure out within your industry what are the stop words. Uh, dark patterns, uh, obviously, Brian mentioned this quickly before, but you know, deliberate um, um, scammy behavior, you know, uh, where you're actually trying to deliberately dupe someone. So, for example, this one is a disguised ad, right? You think that um, you have to click one of those when actually the download uh, uh, button is over on the left under uh, Onyx for Mac, really. So you click that somewhere else. That's a horrible feeling and that is very bad expectation management too because I'm thinking one thing's gonna happen and something completely different is going to happen. Um, and then you remember that. So, uh, another thing you see a lot is, for example, in e-commerce, people get you uh, have hidden costs. Again, that's kind of a feeling of helplessness and it's also that feeling of being let down like, hey, you were dishonest with me. I didn't know this. I wouldn't have said yes if I had known this. Another thing is, for example, we see when we do usability tests and so on, uh, qualitative uh, research. For example, if you sneak something into the basket, that's another thing that people get really angry about. So dark patterns are dark for a reason. That's because they you know, make people basically hate you once you figure out. So as, as Brian said before, it can be effective for short term. Long term, it's going to be damaging to your brand and your relationship with your customers violating expectations so I talked about this earlier where it's really important to manage expectations because another thing is we um, it's good for our survival when our expectations are met it also makes logical sense we feel it as a threat to our survival when our expectations are met so we have a negative a cortisol reaction when when something doesn't come through the way we want it to come through this is an example from when I was working at Unbounce, and um, it's such a clear example. You might have seen me use it before, but it gets the point across very, very well. Uh, this was an old version of the uh, uh, checkout process where basically you, you, you went through um, a lot of marketing communication for Unbounce, where it was saying free trial, free trial, free trial, free trial. You go through the pricing page, free trial. You get to the first step in the checkout, and it says free trial, and, and there's only four pieces of information you have to fill out. Well, what happens is when you click the free trial, Ta-da! 13 surprise fields and we want your credit card information. That is a very, very, very different outcome than what we're saying. So in, in you know, the button was saying summer free trial, but really what happened is you need to give up your credit card information. So one of the ways we fixed this was to actually have a progress bar that showed you the steps. And then it actually said, uh, 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 continues your credit card information. You're going to get the free trial, but there's different reasons why Unbounce wants your credit card information up front. One is obviously it'll make it easier for Unbounce, but also it'll make it easier for you if you want to continue to save all your data after you've uh, gone through this uh, 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 free trial. So that brings me back to just reiterate the point that 
every single step in the funnel primes the next. So we've been priming people to believe that it was a free trial and there's four form fields you have to fill out when actually there's something completely different. Violating expectations, you really, really have to be careful with. Uh, ambiguity is another thing that's very difficult for us. This also goes back to cognitive psychology. You'll see there's a lot of overlap. Uh, if you read uh, neuroscience uh, alone or cognitive alone, like Brian was saying before, it covers different areas. They might have different explanations, but once you start getting into both, you'll see there's a lot of overlap and you can, you can put these things together. So for example, in cognitive psychology, one of the things Brian talked about was the fact that it's limited how many things we can do at once. In the heat test, we also saw the multitask is really hard. So here Here's an example. I live in Vancouver. Uh, it's a very competitive housing market. A while ago, I had to find a new apartment. Uh, that's difficult in Vancouver. When you find something you want, you sprint there before the horde of other people who want the apartment. So I saw an apartment I wanted. I clicked the link, uh, book an apartment. Then it got super ambiguous from here because really, there's two forms on this page. Book an appointment. And then the other one says, or book an appointment today. And I'm like, what should I do? Well, I want the apartment. I should probably use the one that's book, book apartment today. But then I get really confused because then on the other form, it says, uh, I'm interested in seeing which apartment number I can choose. Quite a few I can choose between. Uh, I have no idea which one it was. Ah, panic ensues. Uh, what do I do? Well, uh, okay. So there's all this uh, contact information up here, basically everything. That's the one form here where I have to choose the apartment. I don't know which one I'm interested in. The other one here talks about doing it today and I have to put in different information. And there's even a link that takes you off the site to another uh, real estate website. So basically I have four different options here. What should I do? Well, in this case I was desperate, desperate so I, I filled out both forms. I went to the other website, I called them, I emailed them and I heard nothing back, which makes me think that maybe it's just because I forgot to actually fax them because they have a fax number there. So it's probably the right thing to do. But this is an extreme example of ambiguity, but it just makes you desperate because you're in a hurry. You're trying to get something done. Uh, you've primed me to believe that it's going to be easy. I just have to book an appointment. All of a sudden, I'm stuck in my tracks because I don't know what to do here. So therefore, managing expectations is, is just really, really important. In cases like this, we want to make sure that, uh, that every step is logical and that people uh, actually we're driving them towards an actual goal and that they feel empowered and that they feel like they're in control of what's going on that they actually understand everything.